What's up, YouTube? Some R2 here. I'm going to take a look at some things here today. Uh, I've kind of studying myself quite a bit, trying to convert, or what physicists, you know, say, and, and see what our electric universe says. And there's quite a bit of things that are unanswered, and, and a lot of things that are answered. And as always, there's always more questions left over. At any rate, uh, what we need to look at first is the actual basic process of, of, of electricity as we use it, you know, both in the, the electric motor and the generator itself, how it's generated and how we use it. And, and, and the electric motor generator are basically the same thing, just one, you know, running in, in opposite directions. It all depends on where you apply your, your force. And uh, what you got here, you got a six volt battery. And the, the process of electrons moving through that wire are always going to be deflected in a magnetic field. But the thing is, to the right hand rule of force, you'll see that the electricity and magnetism obey is the fact that the, the magnetic field has to be at a perpendicular or 90 degree angle to the flow of current. And even when the current flows through the wire, it produces a magnetic field around it at a perpendicular angle. Now, I will show you how this works. This is just a coil of wire. It's pretty simple, really. It's coated wire, and on one side, you completely take the coating off, and on the other side, you just take the coating off of one side. And what that does is allows for a pulse. It allows, you know, when, when the wires the bare side it has current, but when it's on the side with the insulator, it, it doesn't have current. So it's on and off, and that has has got to be at the proper time where the magnet is, and it's 90 degree deflection somewhere around that, so that the magnet pushes when there's no current involved, or when there's current is involved. If it stays current all the time, then the magnet will just only have one push. So that's why it, you know it does this. You know, it has to be pulsed, and you'll see that if you don't, you know, if you don't put a magnet there, it we move the magnet. You know, it doesn't work. In fact, it'll sit there and cry. But if you put a magnet close to it, you know, it'll sometimes have to give it a little push. As long as you hold that at a perpendicular angle to that coil of wire, and there's electricity flowing through it, then it'll continue to deflect and push. Gives it a little push every time it goes by at a 90 degree angle. This is what's known as the right hand rule, right hand rule. And uh, if you wanted to, to, you know, argue the fact that we live in an electric universe and it's a unified field of electricity, then you could, you, you'd have to say that everything was supplied by a source of electricity, such as our solar system and the galaxies and, and, and all that. They all have an induced current. That means the current comes from somewhere and it's always a telltale sign of attraction. But at any rate, we'll get into that. I want to show you some other things about how it, we can find out if we live in a, in a unified field. And these, these, these same right-hand rules of deflection should show up when we move anything. It's, it's the basics of this uh, electric motor is if, if, I take, if I take this electric motor and I spin this with a magnet in front of it, this also pulls in electric current, and it will produce electricity through those wires. Just the movement of that copper in front of that magnet will produce an electric current. And it is argued by physicists that the electricity, that is an endless supply of electricity in the atoms of this copper. And when you put a magnetic field next to it, they become they knock them loose, and, and, those, and then they allow it to travel through the wire, which is absolutely insane to think about that this little piece of copper can hold an endless supply of electric current. All you just have to do is sit over here and turn it, and it'll make electricity for you. And that's not what's happening. The fact that motion creates energy everywhere in the universe, and this is just what, then we're going to see that. And if that is the case, then we should see these right hand rules should show up in certain types of motion. And so we'll take, for instance, let's look at this, uh, move this back here a little bit. Little mirror set up here. We'll 
you'll see I got a, a few marbles and balls, a few balls sitting here. But if you take this uh, donut and leave it standing, it, you know, it, it, it won't stand up. Gravity is going to immediately pull it over one side or the other. But if you turn it, voila, there's extra energy to defy gravity. It stands up. Now, what physicists call this angular momentum, you can look into that too. But, uh, it, you know, it's, it's arguable either way, the fact that it's not fully understood. The gyroscopic effects are not fully understood. They know, they know how it works, they don't, they don't know why. You, know, you can calculate the angular deflection and, and, and all that. That's very easy to do with mass and, and, and size and knowing what's going to happen. But how? You know, why does it do that? that that's the unanswered question. But if you look and see that any objects that doesn't have even, you know, non-magnetic objects, and it's just two marbles with some epoxy, if you, two, you know, put them together and spin them, they seem to spin a lot longer than they would normally, you know. That, in fact, you know, well, I got a high-speed camera here. We're going to look at it. But if you know if it was in a, in a a unified field of energy, then this right hand rule should show up in, in this movement. And of course, what we'll show you right here, I'm gonna show you the the footage. You can see clearly that the, that the two balls want to try to stand up. One ball tries to leave while the other one tries to you know normally go down. Of course, the table stopping it from going down. But the deflection shows up. This, this, there's this field of energy that, it, you know, obeys the right hand rule. The perpendicular force, you know, as this thing spins in one direction, there's an, there's a, there's a, there's a force that shows up that wants to tend to go in the 90 degree perpendicular range. And here we have, like I said, I got two cue balls here. I put a one and a two on there and a couple of arrows so we can see them on the slow motion camera. But again, it doesn't matter, you know, this same, you know, it works no matter what you use, this over unity seems to show up. And, and we'll, when we see it on a high speed camera, you'll see that it's actually one ball's and it never touches and the other ball is just rolling around on the table. So the force applied would almost be equal to rolling that ball on a, on a flat, smooth surface. It would roll quite a long ways, you know, and that's why this seems to spin so much longer, because it's friction, less friction, only one ball touching the table. Yet this deflection of 90 degree perpendicular is trying to lift the whole apparatus up in a 90 degree you know, angle, deflected angle opposite of the angle of force that was supplied. And let's take a look here. We got one more thing we'll look at. It kind of uh, proves that theory well. So I can get this thing set up here. Side. You'll see that this right hand, there's a force that perpendicular to the, you know, called angular momentum. You can look this up. Yet it doesn't matter if I pick up on this side or the other side, it still stands, you know, straight up until, you know, it slows down. And, and that's the only thing that can explain that is a unified field in my opinion because this is obeying the same types of rules that the electricity and magnetism obey you know and that's the, you know dominant force of the universe and it doesn't matter if it's electric or not any motion follows these rules it's just in fact I got a uh, 
light right here. That's what I'll show you. Crazy. Believe it or not. Looks like this little weight here. Let's see. Hang it on this side. It's still a bed. There's, there's, a, there's an unseen energy, you know, going through the center of the axis. It's being applied. It, it, it's, uh, it's an induced, <laughs> induced field of, of energy. You look for the attractive force, and, and of course, in our solar system, everything seems to be attracted to the sun. If you look at a galaxy, everything seems to be attracted to what, you know, they call the black hole, the unforeseen energy in the center of our galaxy. All the stars seem to be attracted to that. And if it were an induced current into the galaxy, then you should be able to see, you know, in, in space something that the galaxies are attracted to, and of course they call that the great attractor. And it's duly noted here, you know, I'll show you the links that uh, you hope there's several thousand galaxies in our cluster that are all attracted to the great attractor, which is where the galaxies get their energy from. So I'm going to put this out there. Maybe that'll help people understand a little bit better of, you know, my theories, my opinions, just, you know, what we're waking up to find in the electric universe. It answers a lot of questions. So. With that, peace and love, big ol' heads up.